Conservatives are the only ones protecting pensions and employment insurance against the inflation that is eating up the paychecks and the benefits of Canadians. Now, the finance minister is suddenly pretending to agree with me on all of this. She sent a memo that's since been leaked in which she says that her ministers will have to find savings to match any new spending in the fall economic update. It's not clear whether the prime minister got the memo. He still wants to continue to pour inflationary fuel on the fire with more spending still. Will he listen to his finance minister, who started to listen to conservatives, and cap spending and taxes. Yeah, yeah. The right honourable Prime Minister. See, only cold-hearted conservatives would imagine <laughs> and describe sending kids who otherwise can't afford to go to the dentist to the dentist as pouring fuel on inflationary fires. Only uh, conservative politicians would consider that giving targeted support for uh, low-income Canadians to help pay for their rent would be pouring inflationary fuel on the fire. Mr. Speaker, inflation is a global phenomenon right now. We've moved forward with targeted supports for families that will make a meaningful difference. Unfortunately, the Conservatives, for all their rhetoric, stand in opposition to help for families. That's it. The Leader of the Opposition. We stand in opposition to the policies that have sent 1.5 million Canadians right. to the food bank in a single month. We oppose a record credit card debt on which the Prime Minister's policies are now driving up interest rates. We oppose policies that have forced one in five families to skip meals because they can't afford food. And you want to talk about cold-hearted. This is the guy that wants to triple, triple, triple the carbon tax on home heating when bills are expected already to have gone up 100 per cent. Why won't he cancel that cold-hearted plan and cap taxes? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The price on pollution returns more money to average families in the jurisdictions in which it applies than they pay out uh, in pollution costs. This is the fact that has allowed us to both lead on the fight against climate change and put more money back in the pockets of Canadians. But the reality is, Mr. I don't know what it is today, but everybody's very rowdy. Maybe I'll let the Prime Minister start over again. And I'm hoping everyone will listen this time rather than shout. And I know everybody wants to help him answer, but it's his turn to speak. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Despite consistent Conservative misinformation and disinformation on the matter, the simple mathematical fact is that the price on pollution returns more money to average families in the jurisdictions in which it applies than they pay uh, in this extra cost on pollu pollution. That's how we can move forward on fighting climate change while supporting families through this, this, uh, this transformation of our economy and of our energy. These are the things that matter to Canadians. This is where we're continuing to put them first, not ideology. Here, here. Mr. Speaker, while the Conservatives continue to focus on me, we're going to stay focused on supporting Canadians, whether that's with measures that Conservatives oppose to deliver rental supports for low-income Canadians, or whether that's to make sure that all Canadians can send their kids to the dentist. But we heard uh, the Conservative leader for months talking about freedoms for Canadians, talking about rights and freedoms, and now that a government is preemptively blocking Canadians' fundamental rights and freedoms, not a whisper from this so-called freedom fighter, Mr. Speaker. When is he going to condemn the use of the notwithstanding clause preemptively? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Nice try. Nice try. He's very clever, but here he a moment ago, I asked who stayed in the $6,000 a room, hotel, $6,000 a night hotel room, and he said that I was focusing on him. Well, I guess that we got our answer then. You're welcome. Now it's clear that he want to talk about anything else to avoid taking a blame for having spent that money on himself while the Canadians are suffering. Can he confirm it was him that had that night? 